So spring is here, and it's about that time to think about uh, taking that summer vacation. And you might even want to take your pets with you. So there are a lot of things to consider when you think you might want to take your pets with you traveling. First off, you're going to be planning on going by air. Check with the airlines. Um, there are certainly some restrictions as to the number of pets allowed in the cabin at any time. Uh, there are some breed restrictions, especially during the warmer months. A lot of the pushed-in face breeds, like your brachycephalics, we call them, the, the, the bulldogs, the French or the English bulldogs, the sheep's, the losses, the pugs, uh, a lot of the airlines don't want to fly them during this time of year. A lot of airlines also have restrictions on breed types, such as the Rottweiler, the Pitbull, or the Chow Chow, they may not allow on the uh, plane as well. So you got to do your homework and check things out and make sure that the airlines are pet friendly. Now, if you have a service dog, you might be able to take the dog on the plane with you, uh, not in a carrier, but actually sitting on the floor next to you. So again, something you want to check with the airlines. If you're thinking of driving, that's a great idea. Make sure your pets are used to driving. Uh, some think they do well. You might put them in the car and think they're going to the veterinary hospital and they may not uh, be so happy. So slowly get your pets sort of in, uh, used to the car, um, acclimate them carefully. Uh, now, uh, good idea, obviously you have to keep them in a harness or some sort of uh, seat belt. They have to be under control. If it's a small dog or a cat, you want to put them in a carrier. Whatever you do, do not let your pets run freely in a car. Very dangerous. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. For those pets that like to keep their heads out of open windows, be careful because they are subject to something called exposure keratitis, where the dust particles hit their eyes going so fast, it can cause some sort of corneal irritation. Another good idea is when it comes to water, since changes in water supply have different effects on certain pets, if you know what I mean. Uh, so start your trip with like a large gallon or two gallon jug of water. And every time you stop, make that pit stop, and the dog has had some water or the cat has had some water, refill it. So slowly you're introducing new waters from different municipalities so the dogs won't notice the change that much. That's also a great idea. Of course, when you're traveling, you have to have a, 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 a bag with all of your pet's pertinent information. You should have a picture. Make sure they have identification, both external as an ID tag and also a microchip. Make sure they're always attached to a leash or a harness. Um, also, if there are any medications your pet is on, uh, make sure you have enough with you and a medical record. Just in case, heaven forbid, you end up having a problem, have to go to a vet hospital, you have your pet's current vaccine records, uh, medications, tests, etc. Very good idea to keep that with you at all times. Now, lastly, uh, when you get to your destination, whether you flew there or drove there, make sure you're going to a place that's pet friendly, and that includes your relatives' homes. <laughs> you might think they're okay with having you and your pets there, maybe not. As far as hotels, there are a lot of pet friendly hotels, but you want to check because some of them have certain restrictions as to the number or the size of the animals they allow in the hotel. So traveling with your pets is great, it's fun, I encourage it, but make sure you're well prepared before you make that bold move. Thanks for listening. <music>